This is all stuff going out, right? This is going out. Yeah. Finished. Uh, recently rented that building there with the door. Blue. What happened? It's supposed to be green. <laughs> is this your custom? Uh, this is your cut. This is your custom trash compact or green trash compact? It's not yours. Oh, they just made it green to kind of blend in with you. It's the one I know. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So this is your building. Do you want to take the yeah, whole front to back? Yeah. So let's just take a quick walk. So this is the back of the building here. It's the back of here. Yeah. And uh, this is the f this so this this part probably the see how it takes. And this wasn't here when I came here in 2000, 1990, whatever it was. No, it was just this. And this seemed like a big building. Auditorium seats over there. So, so like if you ever want to do a big a big uh, event, you can. And what's in there? Just just storage. Sto storage of part of. Um, uh, but we're going to be moving up on the control. The whole QC is going to go. Yeah. Oh. It's good. It's. Um, and what are these? What does Steve do over here? What happens now is parts come in to QC. It's a tiny little pokey department. Oh. If they're short in production. People sneak in and steal part, you know, before they can see. Oh yeah, th this is this is all you see at Riga is six. That's all you see. You don't know what it is. You think who's who is this six company and what do they make? What do they make over here at six? This bit was my my design. I sort of plagiarized a Swiss architect that makes houses in the forms of old buildings, yeah. castles and stuff like that. It's very European for sure. Okay. We should go in. I'm freezing. So here's a row of RP These are all people who don't play records. They just hang their records on the wall, you know, as they say. It's lunchtime. That's what's happening. Oh, I see. Okay. What you're missing there, because it's later in the day, is the earlier century. One thousand stations where the motors are fixed in. You see, we have the jeeps putting in applied pressure to allow the glue to set correctly. Right. And these are the feet. You never know when they're going to play. Could be the next 10 minutes, could be the next 20 minutes. Who knows? Stay there. Feel good, right? This level. Look, yeah. Complex tapered shapes. Yeah. Different tape throughout. Little tiny pips. Different natural frequencies for each part of the feet. Trying yeah. to make it as rigid as, but not as compliant as right. most people think. Right. And trying to make it as rigid as possible, but without any high frequency natural frequencies within the foot. Right. Very minor, tiny little point, but yeah. it's still done. Yeah, that's great. This is a more recent development, which we patented. But instead of using a bearing and a thread and a nut underneath. We're able to machine the thread into the bearing. Oh. We tolerance the hole in the plinth so that we then cut this as a screw. This screws in and cuts its own thread oh. into the turntable. You wouldn't believe the sound quality difference that made. Really? Every, every turntable at this level gets this kind of test. Every turntable at every level gets a Co test. Yeah, but not the this. The tests are a bit more exacting. As right. This one is. Uh, this building goes all the way through the floor down to ground. Okay, in the ground, it's got a huge chunk of concrete. That's good. Um, it, it's the opposite of what you need for turn we're, we're trying to build the greatest mass on which to do our testing. Right. With plinth, we try and have the minimum, minimal mass. So now. Does every P8 and P10 sit on this? Yeah. You bring it in here and you do this, this test. Is, this is a test of something at the moment, I guess. Um, yeah, I was just testing the motor for the, um, the RP10. So I can power this up and you can see the uh, RP8 in there. Sure, yeah. Testing Where's Ashton? Ashton was going to be. He's uh, going to be right, right outside here. Oh, is he? Okay, I think yeah, so. I'll leave it for um, Ashton to show you that. Yeah, so that's the test. 
All right, so now we're going to get a demonstration of this new technology that you've developed, that Ashton has developed, as an American, to... <laughs> to uh, a quiet, a quiet, American. quiet American from uh, Pence territory to measure um, wow and flutter is what we're going to measure here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wow flutter speed every yeah. every facet of it we care to. Okay. Is that contentious for you? Yes, there is the, <laughs> that's how intolerant they are here. So it shows you what they expect to get, what they will demand to get from the planar one, planar two, and the planar three, RP6, RP8, and RP10. Look at the variation in the RP10. They will not allow too much variation. It's really interesting to see the difference in spec. You've got the uh, one flare tolerance as well. This is a new chart that you developed? No, no, this oh, has been there for... But you haven't been able to really uh, measure it to the same degree as you can now with this... With this. Ah, oh, right, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But this has been around, how long have we had these? More than a year now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And so this is, this is a... Let's explain this again. What's on here is a... Um, a cutter disc. It's a cutter disc. These, these are one or two hundred pounds each, the discs, made uh, yeah. in America. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get them done in England. Really? Yeah, it's shocking. So we might boast about our British... And what are these usually British. made for, these encoder discs? It, it's the easiest for other technologies, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, all kinds of different stuff. The, the, uh, the sensor that we're using is a relatively uh, commodity-level sensor. Um, it's used in things like printers, um, some applications, and all that, I, I think. Um, but what it is it? It's tolerant of misalignment, uh, vibration, and various things. You can get much more accurate sensors, but they, they require a, uh, a height offset and a mounting tolerance that is just not really feasible for right. us. Okay, so now it's running and it's in measuring. Yep, so you well, can they're see also normally done on plastic. Mm -hmm. Our early ones are done on glass. And this is, gl this is glass? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've got our test boxes and we can uh, select our different products. And then once you select the correct product, you say go, and it will collect data for about eight revolutions worth, I think. Sets you right now. So every one of these turntables, every turntable that, that the ones and twos don't come into this room. Not they? this table, they've got a different room. room. They've their own. Okay. Every area, every turntable is tested. And and so this is for the this is for the eight and ten? This is purely for that area. For that area, two. okay. And so we can see we've, uh, this one's passed. So the screen goes green, so you get a red, red screen if it fails, green screen if it passes. So then you know it's within the tolerance listed up there, because yeah. you built it into the, into the system. Yeah, and so we're at 0.1% wild flutter. And then 33.39 on speed. Yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's the production system. That's what everything's tested for production right now. Right. Um, obviously, uh, when we were doing the project at school, um, we actually started out doing most of the processing in the computer because um, right. it's so much easier to see what's going on. You do the embedded system, you know, after right. the fact. But here you really see it. Yeah, but we've used a, uh, a graphical program that was called LabVIEW just because it's a really great way to quickly and easily generate a uh, graphical user interface. And can you, do, can you, are you able to generate one right now for that test? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see. Well, the way, the way, the way it's set up right now, it's fully asynchronous. So you'll have to forgive me for a second. I'll have to make sure the USB communication line is working. So now we've got the readout, as opposed to being on here where it just says pass or fail. Now we're seeing live data. So we'll uh, collect. So they, they, they run asynchronously right now, <coughs> basically. Um, the, uh, the box. Uh, the interface of the sensor is always sending serial data out to the uh, computer, so you can just run it whenever you want. But um, yeah, we'll sit and collect some data and process it. We've got a new version of this that runs in real time, and you can see you yeah. know, your needles moving yeah. around. And it's good fun, but it's not quite. So quite what we're seeing on the screen yeah. there is not what's being collected now. That's some. That, that was, was the previous. Previous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now there's there's a there's a run. Now you should explain the uh, the resolution here, so people don't think these are enormous precipitous drops. And, and yep, yep. Uh, right now, this one's set to auto scale, which is something Roy wants to change. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but yeah, we can zoom out a bit. Uh, My brain is too.
too simple to understand. Me too. That looks better. It looks better. That's important. So it must sound better too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, no, this just gives us pretty much anything and everything you, you want. You've got all your... So explain what we're seeing now to people. So the top graph is just your the, the raw speed data coming from the sensor. There's a bit of averaging to uh, get rid of the noise that you pick up, but um, that is right. just raw speed basically. And if you look at the scale, it's it's between 33. Point, well, it's not. Go, it's between 33.5 and 33.3. I mean, it's really right, very close. It's, it's dropping down to 33. Point, just below 33.3. It's it's and it's not going much above 33.4 and change. So it's. Okay, that's the top one. And the middle one is... Uh, then we've got unweighted and weighted wow flutter. Okay. Um, so that, that does the uh, calculation, um, literally just as a percent deviation from ideal speed. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a bit more complicated than that. It's, it's deviation from the averaged speed. So if your turntable, if your drift is up at, say, 33.5, it will uh, calculate that around 33.5. Or whatever the turntable is right. right now. So this is showing approximately 0.15. Would you say is the maximum? Yeah, plus yeah, or minus. Two, you hit you hit 0.2 in yeah. a couple of peaks, but. And then what's the bottom one showing? Uh, that is just an FFT. Um, you usually need to run it a bit longer to get better resolution. Yeah. But that's to look at the actual frequency of the speed variations, and that can tell us things about whether it's a pulley or a subplatter, what what's causing the. Uh, aberrations All right. okay that's great that's really useful and will be more I think when we learn more about the equipment yeah. the two middle bits I think that But this is where they test rp3s and rp6s and here's p3 yeah. p3s yeah p3s So we're, today we're getting towards the end of the day now, so things will start to be packed. Right. Um, but what can I show you? So, so in other words, things are built in, during the day and then late in the afternoon they're packed? Yeah, we'll, we'll do a schedule for the day and we're getting now towards the end of the day. And are the same people who do the building do the packing or is it Not necessarily, yeah. sometimes, sometimes not. Yeah. Everybody does a bit of everything, some people prefer doing and when I get a turntable into review, all kinds of parts missing, I can blame you. <laughs> never, it's never happened. I've never gotten one of your turntables I'd to like review. Just show you some bit. Yes, we got a, a few bearings and tubs. Um, yeah. Unoiled and over there by. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Just like to. Um, no. These are these are clean. Can oh, yeah, yeah. I just want to um, show Michael the yeah, no, that's fine. I'll, uh, I'll take any one or yeah, yeah. They're they're P three ones. Uh, pick a good one. No, no. <laughs> you you pick. <laughs> okay, that one. That's that's that P three there. And then obviously we've got uh, P twos there as well. So a little variation. Just clean the dust. Uh, is that a yeah, it's a P2 on that one. Do you want me to put the bearing in the oil one for you as well? Yeah, these, these are ultrasonically cleaned and sealed, so you know they can be left out in production. Right. So that's the seal. I'm taking that off now. I just, I just want you to feel anything. I'll be happy to feel anything. This is pre-lubricated? No, no lubrication. But they don't get lubricated. They do. They do. This, this is without. Is this is dry. Yeah. They lubricate at the. Can I touch that. Yeah. Won't, yeah, won't, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's. That's pretty good. Okay. And what would that? What do you think that would cost? What is this, the price is right? I have no idea. I don't make anything. Okay. But now, if I was one of these, if if we we put a drawing out of this bearing, 
with the tolerance to just any, any manufacturer. Yeah. Most would say it's impossible to make it to, to do it at that time because our tolerance on that bore is eight microns, okay, and that, that's the cheap one. Yeah. And they, the, the people that do it um, or could do it would probably say ten pounds, twenty pounds, yeah. something like that because it's difficult. We, we get these for something like one pound twenty, one pound thirty per bearing. How do you do that? By working with the supplier, by using the process, using CNC machinery now. In the old days we used to use special tooling which were hand set with cracking little grub screws to the right. Yeah. So all of this new technology that we now have available in general manufacturing has made turntables so difference. much better. Uh, they have. Right. Yes. If you take advantage of it and then so that that's yeah that's a that's a P3 P6 bearing P2 no different is it the same tolerance or not quite same tolerance it is the same tolerance just a smaller yeah. 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 that's an RP1 RP2 bearing. It's a high we cut cost bearing. by having slightly less brass in, right. in the material. It gives a slight. It's not so much the brass, but the fixing into the turntable is right. a little less structurally right. rigid. That will give you a greater fixing area. Sure. sure. But that increases the mass, which you don't want to do too much. Too much. That, you want that to be relatively low, but stable with temperature. Right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 Yes. Different materials on different turntables. We're using ceramic braces on the NIAD. Oh, oh. Now this NIAD, does it exist physically to look at? Yeah, I've got one at home and there's, I think there's nearly one. Oh, you can see the brace there. Yeah. I don't think I noticed it. I wasn't looking, oh. I wasn't paying attention. Once Have we get home, home I get drunk and we'll see what's going on. So, very quick, man. this is our thing. Wow. Look at this stuff. This is sick. It's like a day's worth of stuff. You've seen the P9. You've seen the car. If you go and have a look at the test room. Another little test area for our P1s. Um, yeah, we so also do test. lots of little um, small mini phonos, phono preamplifiers, uh, test headphone them. amplifiers. Now, this room's often used. So, how long has this whole system been in place with this encoder system? Not that long. About a year. About a year. Something between one okay. and two. That's years. not a long time, considering you've been in business for how many years now? Forty. 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 Yeah, and this is just a big, big improvement in in being able to measure what your performance is. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's helped production, and not, and um, it's come at the right time because the production's gone up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, would you, you wouldn't have made this investment to make this? Maybe you would have. Had business been flat? No, you couldn't. Have. Why would? Yeah, you wouldn't. We're talking about one person for a year, and the cost of all this stuff being made out in America, and yeah, that's that's the one. That's why I'm so you can probably tell excited. Yeah, um, the, about the growth of the company. It's given us profit, which we can buy all of this stuff. We can invest. We can we can get a guy like Ash, and yeah. and we can say. You don't have to make anything productive, you know. We, we can research. use your skills, we can yeah. use it for research. Yeah. Yeah. Because that research is, brings you to a point where you can really test these things Absolutely. before they go out the yeah. door and know, and know what you're saying. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. Good for you. So this is electronic testing again. Lovely. Thank you. I hate using this word. I know you don't believe it. You need. Unique. Yeah. Okay. I, I, you can use whatever word you like, and I don't have to Robin believe it. Robin's our only 
high five for that chick. Really, really Bit of an order of fire. Over there. <laughs> the only w- only one. My sins. Yeah, I'm surprised actually in this place. Well, that's okay. People don't want to do what they do outside of work. Yeah, at what they, they do at work. Do, do you want to be introduced? I don't or? mind. I don't. I know Michael yeah. anyway. Oh. How are you there? Uh, stereo file nice and audio you. and law and law and law Enjoy looking at that. It's great. Good. Yeah, Thank you. Right. I enjoy doing it, which makes it worthwhile Excellent. doing. Yeah. So I enjoy it. Well, this is our test room. Um, we test all the circuit boards before they go in the in the cases. You can check for missed components, dry joints, etc. <coughs> so all the, every single board is, is pre-tested uh, before it goes upstairs. This is an aria board at the moment. Now the but boards uh, are uh, stuffed elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. We we supply kits up to. Um, the companies that actually populate the boards with the uh, surface mount and so, so you you supply them with the parts yeah, too. That's oh. it. Yeah, yeah that's not that's the unique bit. Yeah, yeah. When you use a subcontractor, yeah. you normally give them a specification. Right. They make the boards, they um, supply the bits, mm. they assemble it, they test it, they give it to you. You put it in your product, and, get and then you test the product. Right. And then if it's faulty, you have to un- undo it. All. It doesn't make any sense. So no. This we we sense. supply them with a kit of parts. Like a Heath kit, like a Dyna kit. <laughs> all, all of these components we buy. You should make year. kits like this. You can, mm. People could buy their own surface mount well, machinery yeah. and you sell <laughs> it. <laughs> He's out with the uh, container at the moment, oh, okay. yeah, moving stuff around. So, uh, yeah, this is an ARIA board I'm just setting up and testing. That, uh, just all the regulating voltages. And, and this, we, this piece is what is this piece? This is the moving magnet, moving coil, uh, phono preamp, the ARIA. Right. Um, and what goes in here eventually? That's, that's a breakout bit. That's part of the transformer would sit in here. I see. And what, so after this is for further yeah. down the line in the production. But the, uh, the JFET transistors, we grade, we test them for um, X amount of seconds, monitor the current flow, and then we populate the ball with them with 0.01 um, milliamps difference between the transistors so they're nicely matched Good. because they're mounted in parallel, so it just right. keeps things nice and tight and sharp. But, uh, Uncommon, uncommon level of quality for a, a well, mo- yeah. modestly priced it's piece. Um, Seven hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah. Which is not a, yeah. a lot of money. It takes a bit more testing in this one because it's got a servo in it to adjust the voltages to compensate the temperature and everything. Right. So when you're testing, you have to let it stabilise and settle down. Right. And tweak, tweak, tweak. So it takes a bit longer, but um, hmm. but they're worth it. But, uh, we do have um, a cost no object which, which actually at the moment has a transformer input. Oh, um, is that under in, in production or is it been in being production for which eight, model is it? Eight years, That's called the IOS. But mm. we we've recently discovered what transformers do. It used to be a black. You know, we know they improve. The sound quality, we didn't know why. Yeah. And more the people that don't like them say it's hysteresis and it, you know, creates. Pro- that whatever we did with cartridges and, and microphones, put the transformer in line and the sound quality improves dramatically. Yeah, I, I, I we didn't like know why. We agree now. <laughs> yeah. something. We finally agree. On but with, this is where I mentioned John Curl with yes. Terry. I mean, he's never met him, but yeah. he's investigated his philosophies. Something clicked, and John Curl knows why. Yeah. And, and now Terry does, and modern FETs, of which we're starting to put them in, I believe, on this true. model. Yeah. yeah, the double ones, yeah. and these are the single ones here. It's, it's quite simple. My, my take on it is that um, an input stage is also able to make a small output voltage. Okay, if the transistors are not matched, there's a mismatch between them, there's a small, very low current flow, Moving magnet cartridge, you've got very high resistance. It's irrelevant. Right. Okay. Put 15 ohms across it, and you've got a small current flow. Yeah. However well you match it. Yeah. No. With an FET, you've got a very, very high output impedance, which is what a transformer is. And John Curl discovered this in the 70s. Huh. Yeah. And he didn't tell the world. Why would um, he? <laughs> I don't know, because I don't, I don't know him. Yeah. But um, after. He's made successful moving coil inputs, probably more than anyone else. Yeah. He's also mentored the world. He, I know Julian in name got a lot of his information from John. Yeah. Free, free of charge and you know in, in a friendly right. offering. Um, now ter- that's clicked with Terry, and we're, we're now looking at that. And he's he's going to remake the iOS without transformers, using these modern matched pair. Which you think will be features. better? Oh, we're, 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 well, we've we've done it on the Aria. We're using the matched um, 
pairs and, and the difference is, is huge. Wow. So we're getting quite excited about the complex. As soon as you put fully complementary, the matching becomes yeah. one, uh, 10 times as important <laughs> or 100 times more important, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, wow. it's what makes a complementary circuit not work and what makes it contentious. Right, if it's not matched, it's... Yeah, but you can't match it either. Right, exactly. Um, but when they're like that, they are. They're a matched pair in, in the silicon chip, they're matched. And are you going to call this a Mark II version? Or no, this, this we just, just, just a running we've just done it as a running yeah, change. Yeah. But we had to listen to it only, only a couple of months ago. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Terry does these things, he always gets it approved. You know, he always says, right, you team of people have to yeah. listen sometimes it's great it's no different Carry right. but on. then if, it, if it's a big difference then how does somebody know what, they're, what when they buy one whether they're getting a, a one with the big difference in sound or the, or the old the, one the new or the old because the old ones have been sold so when so. You, but you when you buy a used one you don't know what you're getting ah no well we haven't even announced this oh well it just did <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah we just did that but we've not th th this oh, is wow. a normal evolutionary change. Yeah, so you wouldn't call it a Mark II version? No, or, no not, not just let it go. But what, what we're getting really excited about is a cost no object for no preamp, for fun, using this concept. Just for fun? You're not going to sell it? We'll sell it, but it, it won't, it, you know, we'll sell 50 a year or something. How much you will know? you think it'll retail for? Four or five thousand, something oh, like that? Yeah, you'd be That's surprised. There's a big market for that, relatively. Mm -hmm. you, you, if, you, if it's as good as you think it's going to be, yeah. there's uh, plenty of market That's for the that. most it's possible, really. Just yeah. spend. I, I know there are uh, other... <laughs> 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 That's money, no object right. for us, that would be. Including the casework and everything yep, else that goes into it. Including the casework, yeah. which is a major part of the cost. I know. Yeah. Okay, well thanks. D don't electrocute yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs>